This meeting is being recorded. Hello, everybody, and welcome back, back to another great edition of my Guru Room Show. And for the Guru Room Show today, I got a very awesome guest, and he is known for the big hit song, 8675309, and I'm talking about Tommy Two-Tone. And I'm really looking forward to talking to him. If you're like me and you grew up in the 8 eight the 80s this was the song this is the song that everyone loved and everyone wanted to find where jenny was at <laughs> and i think everyone called that number every now and then just to check and see if it was a real number or not and of course it was a real number but jenny wasn't always on the other end of the phone but i am looking forward to this interview i am rocco cross i am the host at stutters i am the host of the guru room show and my interview with tommy be coming up very soon this is my guru room and as always welcome to my nightmare so stay tuned hey here we go. this meeting is being recorded okay thank uh, welcome to Gru, and thank you so much for All coming right. on the show. So, like, the first thing I want to start um, asking... It's an honor, and... Okay. <laughs> thank you, <Hit> buddy. <laughs> and, you know, I want to start asking you, like, the first thing I want to start a asking you is typical question I usually start start out with is, like, what what drew you to songs? Like, why did you want to start creating music, make music? Uh, well, gee, every place is loud here in Los Angeles. <laughs> um, I was very shy when I was young. My big brother was in bands. Um, I was sat at home, played surf music and spoke music. And um, uh, that would be in the... 60s. I'm 77, by the way. Um, all back to the 70s when I was in college, we just we didn't like any of the bands. We didn't like rock and roll and everything. And I, we started doing old rock and roll, and I just started telling stories. The shyest guy in the band, I took over when we went up there, and uh, I things I couldn't come up with just standing around, I would come up with on stage and end up the leader. Um, I'm an observer. Uh, I have a different point of view, as you can tell from my lyrics. And, Definitely. Um, music and words work together for me. My mind is really not that fully functioning unless there's I'm pl playing my music. So um, I just have my own way of looking at the world and I uh, try to tell people about it, see if it resonates with anybody and uh, ranges from, I know all kinds of genres. I spent the seventies playing everything, but rock and roll. I played in country <laughs> bands, soul bands, reggae bands, swing bands. And uh, long about 1978 in San Francisco, somebody told me I was new wave and i they didn't know what it was different about me, so they, uh, we just, they just let us be, and we just came up with what we came up with, and it's hopefully songs you wake up the next day humming in or just thinking about a, a line here or there. So that's why I do what I do. Oh wow! Okay, and you know your band to Tommy Tommy Two two tone like how, how how did how did like the band form then like how did everyone come together and become a band well the, there was some pre two tone this is you know the 80s was all thought out about starting 1976 77 and cbgb's in new york and san francisco scene and i came back in there i i lived up in the country and was playing all kinds of bands and moved the city and I had a nickname. I lived in a little town, Willits, California, where every everybody had a nickname. I mean there was a guy who sold a refrigerator and his name is till this day refrigerator Jim. <laughs> so my real name is Tommy Heath, but I mumbled so bad that no one ever understood it. So I decided I needed hard syllables. And uh I drove old 
two-tone Chevys and uh, just just started to happen. So if I call you up, I don't tell you I'm Tommy Two-Tone. I tell you I'm, this is Two-Tone. <laughs> but the record company liked the name Tommy Two-Tone, and I thought it was a little corny, but <laughs> we went with it, and here we are. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> and when when the band formed and and you were you were you were gelling as a group like the first hit was the ain't angel says no and and how did how did you create that song that was a five minute song uh sometimes they just you feel like you're not creating them you're uh interpreting them just came to me i i told the whole story uh just teen teenage angst story with a twist to it you know uh i heard that your daddy died is in the bridge or i heard that your poodle died i'd sing it sometimes one way and one the other and uh it's this very simple almost country song but there were several like that on our first album this was two years before jenny uh, even before that, our song "Cheap Date" became a national AOR hit. Now, I, for all you youngsters, back in my day, they had album-oriented radio. When a disc jockey would <laughs> lock himself in the studio at midnight and play the whole album, oh wow! And there wasn't some pro corporate programmer telling you what to play always. Yeah, and I actually see a resurgence to that, which I support wholeheartedly. Um, so the song Cheap Date is a very, uh, yeah, black humor song told by a very naive guy. I played this character. Uh, he's, we call him dumb, but concerned. He just <laughs> he doesn't quite get it. He keeps getting into <laughs> situations and trying to understand from his point of view, which is completely off the wall. So the Cheap Date and Angels Say No became uh, the biggest songs off the first album. And we ended up going on the road. Oh, suddenly we went from a little bar in Ukiah, California to opening for Tom Petty at Red Rocks. And, oh, wow. Uh, we just uh, we were all poised there and got our second album done, the one that has Jenny on it. Mm -hmm. Two Tom Two right when MTV started and we had the video ready. So I really can thank MTV for my success. Oh, wow. And you, you know, like, like uh, that was a song I grew up on and, and it, it, it's one of those songs when you hear it for the first time, you just, you can't get it out of your head. You sing it like for the whole entire day, eight, six, seven, five, three, Oh nine. Like, and, and it's how, what in, in inspired you to want to make that song and pick that phone number. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the problem. I had a partner, Jim Keller and he, and he wrote it with a friend of his and they have a completely different story. So I can only tell you my side, uh, Jenny, was a real person and that was her parents phone number and we just she gave me the number to give to my partner and we ended up writing a song about it they did most of the work and they had came up with this kind of nursery rhyme song and i i took it and tried to invest some soul into it and so it's a real number it was your parents number for a very short time now if you talk to jim keller or the other guy alex call they'll tell you the opposite they just made the oh. number up. I can only submit what my memories. I'm not going to swear this is the truth. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and like I, I remember when that when that song was first out, and like as soon as that was out and became a hit, and everyone in their city was calling that that phone number. It doesn't matter what area code it was, like. I think whoever had that number in each city was getting a lot of phone calls every day asking for Jenny, yeah. of course. <laughs> yeah, I, I tortured those people. <laughs> and the funny thing is, um, People Magazine and their article about us got me back by putting my real phone number in the article. 
So that gave me some idea of the havoc that I'd cause. <laughs> but we didn't know. We just, we just thought it sounded cool. Yeah, exactly. And, and the song actually went went gold, and it it was in the the top top five. So how did it feel at? at that time like to have like a top five song a, a song that's that's playing all over the world uh it was uh, we were out on the road at that time and uh i think people always related to me as not some uh egomaniac star but just kind of guy like them and suddenly it's it's everywhere uh i remember i was on my way to dick clark just the thing and that's when you had to lip sync it and um i don't sing them the same way every night so i had to i said i gotta relearn that first the way i sang it and my manager just okay turned it on the radio and found it in three seconds so it was everywhere <laughs> and um i just accepted it as one of those things uh it didn't go to my head did it mm. chris uh no <laughs> I'm still just a regular guy. <laughs> good, good. That's good. <laughs> and besides, like, of course, the big hit, the night, the song about about Jenny. Like, what what other songs do you do you like most? Like, any song that means that means most to to you? Well, on the first album, we had Cheap Date and Angels Say No, and they are, we called them one FM and one AM, and one kind of left field one and one just regular rock. So Jenny was the regular rock, and its partner was uh, Which Man Are You? And we made great videos of those, and somehow Which Man Are You didn't quite go. But um, there's two or three other songs on there. I really wish we'd have kept putting that album out, but it's... It, Right after that hit stopped, they said, you got to go do another one. Um, and we just kept coming out with new stuff. And now I'm stepping back and taking a look at it and saying, that, you know, this one really holds up in the long run. Oh, so, yeah. So that whole album sounds pretty cool. And I like and all the songs. Okay. And when when you're playing live, like, what do you love most about being on stage, about playing live in front of the crowd? Well, I just come alive. I was, like I said, I was so shy. I couldn't, I always had a best friend I could talk to, but I couldn't stand up and talk in front of five people. But I went on stage and I just, it's like uh, the crowd is this giant lion out there. <laughs> and I just treat them as this one big thing. Except for the what we call the party fill people, the people in the front row, because I'm you got to see a little direct feedback. I'm getting great overall feedback energy, but well, I need to talk to somebody. And yeah. um, I didn't have any problems. I was suddenly playing for eighteen thousand in Blossom, Indiana, and yeah. uh, whereas. I couldn't stand up in a meeting and give a speech at all. And I don't know why, but it just brought out that side of me. And, uh, but it didn't make me act like that all the time. I think people walk around and act like stars are really corny. So, <laughs> and that could really screw up your songwriting because you want to be, react with people as regular people. Excuse me. <laughs> so uh, did i answer that i talk in circles sometimes <laughs> oh no yeah definitely did <laughs> and you know that must be such a good feeling when you're standing there on on on, on stage and <laughs> your your big hit song like to have everyone screaming on the top of their lungs eight six seven five three oh nine like over and over like that that must be like such an awesome feeling you know it's great because no matter what happens the crowd goes wild sometimes i go out and play a whole bunch of new songs and they i'm good enough singer and talker that i could sell people a song they never heard 
but then we play that and everyone goes nuts and they all <laughs> they know all the parts yeah. but i say i got it they all go i got it <laughs> so it's a great feeling <laughs> and and who 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 would you have loved to done a song with like like there's so many different bands and artists like is there is there is there anyone you 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 wish you had done a song with well i could think of my heroes at the time guys like nick Lowe and uh bram parker or even elvis costello uh or i, I love soul music i'd love this thing with mavis staples or somebody and i like country music too so i'd love to do a duet with all those kind of people um and i just I only now have enough nerve to ask people i got some people uh sitting in on my new record which i can't mention yet because it's not positive oh. and <laughs> i feel like i was a fanboy back then but no i've never treated stars as stars i either ig ignore them and let them have their own world or talk to them like a regular person and that's starting to pay off in my old age here because uh i don't do the fan talk when i after jenny i i left hollywood because i didn't want to just be hanging out with other musicians it's to write and understand you need to be with regular people so i live in a small town and and you might think I'm a, you know, pretty provincial, but I've seen it all. I just prefer that. Oh yeah, yeah. The the ni nice little town, quiet, quiet life, right? Well, not too quiet. You know, you want to have a place you can go dance or listen to some twang when you need it or something. <laughs> okay. The simple life. The yeah. simple life. Yes. <laughs> And from traveling all the time and being on 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 the road doing the whole, all different shows, is there any like funny or wild road story? Gee, I don't know. We, um, I could say, opening Red Rocks was probably the biggest change in my life. But I've had other times. I remember I was playing at the Ritz in New York. I went outside to smoke a joint or something and uh, tried to get back in. And the doorman goes, who are you? And I go, I'm Tommy Two-Tone. And he goes, oh, yeah, and I'm Iggy Pop. <laughs> and stuff like that, because I don't, you know, I don't turn into a rock and roll guy until I walk on the stage. The rest of the time, yeah. I'm just a guy. <laughs> and, um when you're not making music and doing live shows, what do you like doing during your your free free time? Well, I um, I was a software pro programmer. You know, every musician needs a day job. Oh, of so course. I, I took that up for about twenty five years, and it was interesting because I, if you've never done a nine to five job, it's actually exotic for a while. Uh, but nowadays, uh, mainly I live in the Pacific Northwest. I mainly go out and just enjoy nature and have an IPA and uh, <laughs> just kind of cruise along, try to keep this old body going. Um, so I'm pretty laid back when I'm not playing. I used to build all kinds of stuff and everything, but now I just kind of rest up because for a long time touring was a glorified hobby but now we're doing it seriously again and oh. um, i just relax in between nice nice and what kind of songs do you like listening to like when you're traveling or or when you're about to do a a show is there any music you like li listening to to get you in like the mood get get you ready i would play songs which i uh since i have this kind of lazy laid back side i have to fire myself up so i play songs that are really pop but rock you know like 
there are bands that are real poppy and quirky, but there's others that rock, like the Romantics are a rock band that are also a new wave band. And uh, bands like that, like Rock Pile. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I listen to all kinds of stuff on the, I, I hard to say what I'd be in the mood. I might put on Patsy Cline or I might put on Ray Charles, but then I play something pretty modern. I, I try to listen to all, all new music. I listen to top 40 radio for at least an hour. Um, oh, wow. Where I live in Portland, there's all kinds of young bands that I go see. I'm not really interested in a lot of what people my age play there because they all are into blues and stuff. And I like rock and pop music. Nice, nice. And I always ask my guests this: as you can see, I'm I'm a horror guy. Are, are there any horror films that you like to watch? Uh, I can tell you that I I can't watch a movie with Chucky kind of people or a clown. <laughs> it just creeps me out. So I mean, uh, a good horror film like The Shining or something which scares the hell out of you is good, but um, I'm not into slashers or anything like that. Um, and I like some of the the corny old ones. I like War of the Worlds was an uh, that was a good one. I like that. Yeah, I was like five, and we went to see it. And when they they're approaching the flying saucer with the white flag, and the, the saucer just aces them, and you see their ashes of their body. Yes. I ran out. Of the, I ran out of the theater. I ran in there, hiding under the town. The lady, the popcorn lady, let me hide under there while I recovered. So, I I would read her. I read some horror but i don't really like horror movies at all anymore <laughs> okay <laughs> i mean i like uh just weird ones. i love to rape her head um so i don't know if they're horror movies they're just odd kind of thing <laughs> and what about food like what kind what kind of food do you like to eat like what's your your go your your go go to food uh, well, I am thinking to call my next country record Truck Stop Charcuterie. You always find me with some salami and cheese and a beer or something like that. Although I might have a a kombucha or a coffee with it. Um, I uh, eat a kind of a keto diet, but I abuse it too. So, <laughs> and I'm um, I changed radically. I I hardly drink any juice anymore, and I used to drink a giant glass of grapefruit juice every morning. Berries, I eat tons of berries because oh, all right, blueberries are supposedly brain food, and God knows I need it. <laughs> <laughs> and and when you're drinking beer, do you have any special beer you like most? Like, is do you prefer one over the other? Well, I live up there where every bar has her own IPA and I like a hazy IPA generally. That's fine. I like to try something local. I'm not okay. You know, it's bad. If I'm in Pittsburgh, I'll drink an Iron City. I don't think they make it just because it's it's like Shinerbach in Texas. It's terrible, but it's local. <laughs> I like to get the local color and find out what people do there. But left to my own, I'll be drinking a hazy IPA. Nice, nice. And I might have a little shot of bourbon with it. Okay, there you go. <laughs> and when you're doing shows, when you're traveling from town to town, what do you like doing? I mean, I don't know if you have any time when you come to the town, but when you travel to a town to play a show, what do you what do you like to do? We have Definite thoughts about that. We want a hotel that's near the gig and or downtown. I don't want to be in some hotel on a freeway exit somewhere. <laughs> and we we try to go to some local cultural thing right after sound check or before it. You know, if we're in Vegas, I take the band to Hoover Dam 
And then later that night, I pop a quiz on them. All right, what did you learn? Um, we'll, uh, if we're in Detroit, we'll go to uh, the, what's his name? Uh, the, the whole museum he's got there where uh, they got all those old towns and all the old stuff. I love museums and, and oh, stuff nice. like that. Kid Rock, and Jimmy Buffett. Then I'll just try to find a river with a waterfall. And we, we, you know, I, I was on tour with this band and they got up at 10 in the morning and went to the bar and started drinking. <laughs> and then everybody was dressed in black all day. And <laughs> I uh, I don't have anything to sing about if I just do that. I got to get out and do it, and I'm I'm often not quite prepared when we go on there, but I got a lot of energy and stuff to put in. So that's that's how I feel about that. Okay. <laughs> and is there anything coming up for you that you want to plug? Like you mentioned, you might have a new album. Like, is there anything coming up for you? We are um, playing. We're trying out our concert show uh, here at the Coach House in San Juan Capistrano, California, folks. Tonight or tomorrow night, we're rehearsing it right now. I got to get back there, and we are out on a '80s tour, the Totally Tubular Festival in June and July. And then I'm re I keep retiring from '80s. You know, I've I left the '80s tour. I'm going. I'm not doing any more 80s tours until I'm 80s. <laughs> I'm a modern artist. <laughs> so we hope to uh, drop the record as soon as that tour is done and start dropping singles August 1st and have the album out in the fall. And we'll be out with another 80s band doing concerts. Not, not the, I'm tired of the lineup where everybody plays 20 minutes. I got something to say and I want to stretch out and do it. And so... <laughs> I'm hoping and that's about where I am and I gotta get back to rehearsal, okay? Okay, buddy, thank you, man. I I appreciate you doing this and taking time. So thank you, man. I appreciate it. Well, thank you, buddy. All right. Definitely. Send me a copy. Okay. I, I definitely will. Thank you. All right. Take care. All right, All right you too. Guys. Thank you. Bye, everybody. <laughs>